Hi, it's Dolores here, and today is Tips, Tools, and Techniques. The topic today is temples. Do you have problems with the edges of your warp continually breaking as you're weaving? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. Some you can fix by the technique of weaving, and others that you need a temple to cure. These are a few different temples. This one's a Toika from Finland. Uh, this one's from Sweden. This is a Leclerc from Canada. And the large one is the same as the smaller one, a Toika. As you can see, they come in metal and wood. Why would you want metal or wood? It's suggested if you want to weave rugs or thick textured items, then a metal one is best. But for almost anything else, the wooden one is better. The main difference is their teeth. The metal one is slightly closer together and they are a little bit thinner and a little bit more angled. The wooden one's a little bit thicker. One thing I really found the difference in is the weight of the two temples. This one is 6.19 ounces. The wooden one is only 3.59, so almost half the weight. And that makes a big difference if you're weaving finer cloth. The way a temple works is there's usually a slide feature and they're adjustable. This one adjusts from seven and three quarter inches to a length of 11 inches. And then you just slide this thing up to keep it in place. The wooden ones work very much the same. This one has a pin to select the various sizes. It swings open and down so that you can get it into the fabric and then close it to stretch it. The reason that you want a temple is something called draw in. When I measure the warp coming out of the reed, it measures 27 and a half inches. But if I measure the cloth, it's currently at 25 and a half inches, a good two inch difference. What happens as I weave and bring the beater forward and back every time I get a pick, that is rubbing on the edges here. Because the warp threads are being pulled in, it's wider here and it keeps rubbing. And that's what causes the breakage on the edge of your warps. To stop that, you need to stretch the fabric to the same width as it is in the reed. The temples are all adjustable. This one has notches across, so it can expand anywhere from 23 and a half inches to 37 inches. To get the proper setting on your temple, you need to lay it against the reed, put your teeth where they're right at the edge of the warp, and just expand it till it reaches the other side. So I'm going by the inside of the teeth here. And then I take the temple and it swings up. I put the teeth right at the edge, trying to catch about three of the warp threads over there and three of the warp threads over here on the left side. And then once I have it in the cloth, I will slowly push this down and slide this piece forward to hold it in place. Now, my warp threads are even with the size of the warp coming out of the reed, and I won't get as much abrasion on the warp thread as I did when it was full width. Temples come in all different sizes. You need to think what width you normally weave. So if you weave a lot of scarves, you're gonna want a smaller temple. This one goes from seven and three quarter inches to 11 inches. And this one 
goes from 10 to 12 and a half inches. I use both of these because I like to put a, a scarf around 10 to 12 inches, depending on how wide I want it. If you weave more dish towels, then you'll probably want one about this size. This one goes from 16 and a half to 22 and a half inches. A temple is a great thing to have, but if you can't afford it, there are other ways to make a temple. In Asia, in Cambodia and Thailand, they use a simple bamboo stick. They sharpen the end of it and all they do is hook it into the fabric, bend it and hook it into the other side. That arch in the bamboo will spread your fabric. So a temple could be as simple as just a stick. And this is an easy temple to make for yourself. All it is is a couple weights, a shoelace, and this is a silk clip for stretching silk when you're dyeing it. These are available at Dharma Trading Company and I'll put a link below. Uh, 25 of these are about $10 and they're extremely sharp and thin so it catches onto the edge of your fabric very easily. If you don't have this, you can use something as simple as a paper clip or a safety pin. I want to show you a weaving technique that's going to help your salvages stop drawing in. I'm going to use a different color yarn and a different shuttle. I'd like you to watch as I throw this across and bring it up where the yarn is. If you look on the right side of the loom, you can see it's fairly close to the fell line. And then it angles out a little bit. But as you noticed, I sort of pulled this shuttle and that causes an arch here. Now it still may be enough yarn to beat it in and not have the draw in. But the ideal is to lift your shuttle up and toward the beater so that you get a nicer angle and then beat. I like to beat on an open shed. That allows more of the yarn to get into the shed without pulling. And then I change my shed and then continue again. So the biggest thing when you're throwing your shuttle is to try and lift it close to your beater. If you pull it towards you, then you're gonna reduce the angle and it's going to be too tight and that's what's going to cause a lot of draw in. I want to show you how to use these homemade temples. I'm going to put the clip right at the edge of the fabric here, trying to catch about three of the warp threads. Then as the weight is held, it's going to pull the fabric to get it in the position that you want. But most looms have nothing to hang this on. If you hang it this way, it's pulling the cloth down. It's really not pulling it wide. So you have to rig something on your loom to hold it out. You can get a kit that includes all the parts for doing this. 
I believe it's around $85. So if you can go to the hardware store, pick up a cup of weights, a shoestring, and some sort of clip, you're gonna save a lot of money. The way that one is used to hold the weight out is to actually put a hook or a, an eye into the loom. I'm not a favor of that. It's going to pull your shoelace one way or the other. It's not going to be perfectly uh, parallel to your breast beam and your beater. So I think that using a leaf stick is probably the easiest way. Also, I don't want to screw things into my loom. Now you could probably use those uh, hooks that you can take off the loom. Again, it's something you need to experiment with. I will put a link to that kit in the description below so you can take a look at what's included with that. It's going to depend on your loom, how you can rig it. Many looms have some sort of castle to them, so often you can take a leaf stick and mount it somewhere your beater bar isn't going to hit it. On mine, it's a little, here we go, right through here. And I would then tie it to the front of the beam and to this upright. Now I take the temple and just drape it over the side of the loom. Depending on your cloth and how much draw in you get, you're going to need to experiment with how much weight you need to pull the fabric to the point you, you want. I have two large nuts tied to the shoelace and if I need extra weight it's easy to hang an S hook, another nut, or some other sort of weight and that gives me enough weight on it that it'll pull to where I need. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you learned a little bit about temples today. I intend to put out a tips, tools, and technique video on all subjects from weaving to spinning to dyeing. If you're a new weaver, you're gonna find a lot of tips. If you've been doing these projects for a long time, you're still gonna learn a lot. So I hope you'll join me. If you would, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. And subscribe to my channel if you'd like to watch more. Don't forget, hit that bell and you'll be notified of the next video that comes out. Thanks. Bye.